This week, I want to talk about risk versus cost. And my question to you is, would you drive your car without insurance? So this week, I want to talk about the difference between a Gmail account and a G Suite for Business account. And more specifically, storing your data or the risk of storing your corporate data in a Google consumer or Gmail uh, account. Uh, we often come across customers who have set up Gmail or consumer um, Google accounts to store their business data, whether that's email or, or documents, primarily documents because it tends to be around uh, usage of the Google Drive solution. It tends to be kind of two different scenarios. So the, the, the first one is a small business who has uh, set up a, a Gmail account primarily as a, as a way to, to share information within Google Drive. So they've uploaded all of their, their uh, corporate data into it and they're using it to share with suppliers and uh, customers and, and internally within their own teams. And, and then they, they maybe have it sinking down onto their, their computers. So, so that's the, the first scenario. The second tends to be larger companies with maybe 50 employees, 100 employees or 1000 employees and either with or without the IT team's permission or, or the business's knowledge, uh, a team or a department has gone and set up Google accounts using their domain, but they're still a consumer or sort of the same as a Gmail account. What this means is that, uh, again, for, for, from for this, this scenario, the corporate data is being stored within these personal accounts. So what I wanna do is go through what I feel are the four core reasons why you should use a G Suite business account over a Gmail or Google account, or certainly what the risks are of using uh, that consumer Google account. So the first one uh, has to be a contract. There's no contract or a service level agreement in place when you have a, a, or use a Google consumer account. With a G Suite business account, you get a service level agreement with Google, which guarantees uptime in terms of the product. It also gives you a contract around the actual data that you're placing in there and gives requirements on both yourself and Google of what happens with that data, who owns that, that data and who, who can control that data. What happens when you leave the product and whether you can take the data with you uh, easily. With a consumer account, again, you're, you're just signing the terms and conditions. There's, there's no um, SLA in place. Whereas with the G Suite business account, you're getting that contract. And with that, which is my second one, you're also getting enterprise level support. With a Google consumer account, no, no support contract there. Now I'm gonna get into some examples, but I just wanna run through uh, these, these quickly. The, the next area and, and where the other two come from is within that sort of security and control uh, piece. So there's no administration within a Google consumer account. As an owner or as an IT administrator, you have no administrative control or backend, which means you have no overview or control over the accounts uh, that your team are using. If someone leaves the organization, you can't change the password, you can't suspend the account, you can't gain control um, over, over that account unless they give you the username and password. Um, and from a security point of view, you can't ensure the security on those accounts. So you can't actually say, um, I want a particular level of password. I want to enforce two-step verification. And you've no way of validating whether that's been done if you ask people to do it. So, so there's no overview and no real uh, security from, from that point of view. And then again, as I said, there's no contract. And all of those things add up. To, to really not being a compliant way to, to hold your data, both in terms of rules like GDPR compliance, but also your own governance and compliance as, as an organization or business. There, there is no way for you to guarantee the integrity uh, and security of the data that you're placing within those consumer accounts. So what I'd like to do is just go through a couple of scenarios that might happen to you if you were to use a consumer account, and not just Google, any uh, consumer account really, to hold your, your business critical data. So the first one is what happens when an employee leaves the organization. So whether you're a small business with you know a dozen employees or you're a large corporation and you've got people using say a consumer Google account, 
when, when the person leaves, if they don't give you the username and password, all the data within that account you've lost access to. There's no way to reset the password and gain access to it again. You're asking that employee to give you the details of that account. There's no administrative control. Um, so, so from your perspective now, that, that information is, is now gone. And you've maybe got to take legal recourse to try and get it back, which again, as we said, there's no contract. It's technically a consumer account. It's actually technically their account because they set it up um, usually. And, and so the business doesn't actually own the account. They don't even own the data within it technically. Um, and so there's a whole legal gray area there uh, that, that's very, very difficult to, to kind of maneuver through. The next one is account lockout. So if you were just to get locked out of the account, so nothing malicious, an, an employee has forgotten the password and they maybe haven't set up a, a backup um, email address, they're now locked out of the account. Again, there's no uh, SLA with, with Google, there's no support, enterprise level support. So you have no one to ask um, to, to be able to get back into the account. You don't have admin control, so you can't just reset the password. So again, you, you've lost access to that data and that information uh, potentially indefinitely. The next one is hacking. So if your account was to get hacked or compromised, again, Google could just shut off access to the account. That's happened um, for, for many people whose accounts have been compromised. And again, they, they've sometimes it's been a long time before they've gotten access to it or they, they've actually been unable to. With a G Suite account, you've got security features built in that will detect things like suspicious logins. Um, from an administrator point of view, admins will be able to suspend accounts um, in order to, to gain back access. So again, that security and control uh, that is just vital for, for businesses to keep access to their data. And then the last one I had was just an employee maliciously deleting data. People always say it's never gonna happen to them, but you, you, know, you don't necessarily know that. And if someone wanted to either take data with them or maliciously go and delete all of the data with, with, within the account, uh, again, you've got no, no recourse or backup or ability to, to recover that data because all of your admin and controls uh, that you would have with a G Suite account aren't there. So that's just four particular areas that I think are important when kind of evaluating this and, and four particular scenarios. I think that really for me, it's a cost uh, versus risk scenario. You know, the, the insurance example I have of would you drive without insurance? Most people wouldn't because the risk is too great versus the cost. We don't like the cost of insurance. It's, it's fairly expensive, uh, particularly in Ireland, but the, the risk of driving without it is too great of getting stopped by the police or having an accident and having to, to make this huge payout. And I think for businesses, if they were to really consider the cost of their data, could they function uh, on an ongoing basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, without the data that they, that they uh, have? And by data, I mean the files and, and the presentations and the invoices and all that information uh, to do with your business. Or what would happen if that information got out in, into the web and all of your, your private uh, corporate data was, was you know, made public in some way? You know, not having the security and control over that data is, is really, really important. An interesting one I didn't mention, um, things like shared drives or team drives, we have a separate video uh, on that. But that's an example of the type of control you would have within a G Suite account where you can set up a shared drive, someone leaves the organization or a supplier, you stop working with them, you remove their account and automatically they're removed from all of the files and folders within that, that account. You don't have that, uh, that shared drives, team drives solution doesn't exist within Gmail. So just another example of the lack of security and control that you have over your, your data. For all of our customers, we recommend at least G Suite Business because it has the, the team drives or shared drives feature. Um, and we just feel that in order to be GDPR compliant and in order to have a secure uh, system, you have to at least be using uh, G Suite Business. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this week's short update. I'd be interested to know what you feel about using consumer accounts versus business accounts. I know some people use consumer Dropbox accounts versus again, uh, Dropbox for business um, or the Google example that I have. There's lots of different examples out there. You know, OneDrive as well within the, the Microsoft world. What do people feel about using consumer accounts versus using business accounts? Is it worth the risk for you as a business uh, to, to kind of cheap out and, and, and not, uh, not, not have to pay this monthly or annual fee um, and, and take the risk of driving with no insurance. Chat to you guys next week.